I'm going to shift gears here and talk about transport of bacteria through biochar emitted soils. So kind of going from the agronomic perspective to at least one avenue, one portion of the environmental perspective. I just want to recognize my collaborators, uh, Dirk, Dr. Sergio Beat was my postdoc who conducted much of this research uh, when he was here. He's now at Oklahoma State University. A colleague of mine and her students at UC Riverside, Dr. Sharon Walker helped characterize some of our materials, especially the bacteria. Dr. Carrie Cantrell, who was in the lab with Jeff Novak at South Carolina at this time, she provided the biochar for this work. And Stacy Antle, who was my technician at the time, conducted many of these experiments as well. So through Jeff's talk in the last month, we've heard a lot of potential benefits of biochar. Potential source of renewable energy, uh, being able to use to mitigate climate change, even transforming waste, taking large volumes of waste down, make it easier for transportation, and also the ability to improve soils. And one aspect of this is by adding biochar to soils, we've seen increased absorption capacity for various agrochemicals, heavy metals, uh, things that basically you would not want reaching the groundwater. So adding biochar has the potential to reduce the risk of groundwater contamination. Well, what we want to look at is what about bacteria? No one really had looked at bacteria at this point. Um, bacteria are just small clay-sized particles that are negatively charged. So we thought, well, let's take a look at whether the biochar is going to impact their transport. So why would we care, first of all, about microbial transport? Well, animal manures are often applied to agricultural lands to increase, to improve nutrients, nutrient uh, concentrations, also to add organic matter, and also sometimes you just need to get rid of the manure. Uh, animal manure may contain pathogenic microorganisms. We've heard this in the news. Every so often we hear about various outbreaks, E. coli, salmonella, listeria. Uh, so there's a potential for pathogens to migrate from the soil surface to the water table, and we certainly have, there have been reports of contaminated groundwater um, and the source potentially being things that, you know, application of manure or other sources on the surface. And the risk or the concern from a human health is that uh, ingesting this water can lead to gastro, anything from gastrointestinal distress to, in the extreme cases, death, especially when we uh, are talking about some of the toxigenic strains of E. coli. So it got us thinking in looking at the literature that when you add biochar to soil, and we've heard this, Jeff talked a little bit about it, and we heard it last month, is that when you mix the biochar with soil, you change various properties of the soil, and you can change some properties of the soil solution. And many of these properties are known to affect microbial transport, things like soil solution ionic strength, composition, and pH, the organic matter present in the solution in soil. Uh, things like flow rate, surface area of the particles, soil moisture content. And if the soil solution has changed drastically, the potential exists that you could change, alter, or alter the surface properties of the bacteria, such as its charge and hydrophobicity, which will impact how they move through the soil. So basically, we wanted to ask, or first of all, determine whether biochar addition to soil affects transport of bacteria. The fact that I'm giving this talk would suggest that, yes, that is indeed the case. Um, but then, if it does, what can, we, can we determine what are the important factors affecting transport through these biochar emitted soils? So again, going back to what we've heard, uh, we know that not all biochars are the same. There's a wide range in characteristics of biochar. And these characteristics that might affect how well bacteria move through these amended soils. Surface area, surface charge, hydrophobicity, particle size. So throughout our experiments, we've looked at various treatments. One is biochar feedstock. So we've looked at comparing poultry litter and pine chips. Uh, pyrolysis temperature, low and high temperature pyrolysis. E. coli strains. In our 
lab, we have shown, and others have also demonstrated this, that not all E. coli are the same. That there's a range of properties and that they transport differently through soil and aquifer materials. So we chose two of our strains that we have isolated. One that has a is not strongly charged, and one that is very strongly charged. A water content. So when a soil becomes unsaturated, so you go from a two-phase to three-phase. So when a saturated soil, you have the soil and the water. The water has filled all the pores in the soil. But then if you drain that soil, you'll have some water left over, but you'll now have air. And now you have a three-phase system, and that will affect how bacteria move through that system. And in soil texture, most of this, what we've done is worked with fine sand, but we also added a sandy loam to just look at the effect of soil texture. OK, so just going over some results. <clears throat> First of all, just to give you an idea, what we do is we pack columns with our soil. And, and biochar combination. We pass the solution through without bacteria. We switch over to a solution containing bacteria for a given period of time. Then we switch back to that bacteria-free solution. So we get this pulse of bacteria moving through the column. We collect what's coming out, and we measure that concentration. And this gives us what's called a breakthrough curve. So on the y-axis, this is just the concentration of the bacteria coming out of the column normalized to what went in. So one would be that we're getting, we have no retention and we're getting all the bacteria out. And I don't know why this uh, heading didn't show up on the screen here. But, and on the x-axis is time. So just as elapsed time over the experiment, you can see that the concentration goes up as this pulse passes through. We switch it off to the bacteria-free solution, and then it drops back down. So what you're looking at here is the breakthrough curve for this one isolate, soil only, just through a fine sand. Now, if we look at in low temperature and high temperature poultry litter, and this was applied at a 2% weight to the soil, we see a low temperature poultry litter actually results in a somewhat increase in the transport of this E. coli. Uh, the high temperature poultry litter, on the other hand, results in a somewhat uh, decreased transport, greater attenuation within the soil. Now, if we look at the pine chip biochars, we see a much more noticeable reduction. Uh, it's similar for the two pyrolysis temperatures. But we, just looking at this, we can see that there is a, an effect of feedstock and pyrolysis temperature. Now, if we look at the less negatively charged SP1, HO1, we see a similar behavior as far as the breakthrough is concerned. Uh, but when we pass this through columns that have been mixed with low temperature and high temperature poultry litter, similar to the other isolate, we see that the low temperature poultry litter results in an increase in the amount of bacteria passing through this column. Uh, we also see, though, that the high temperature poultry litter, similar to the other isolate, results in a reduction, but it's a much greater reduction. We go from here, you know, just I think it's 20 or 30 percent reduction to over 50 percent reduction here. But what's really noticeable between the two isolates is the effect of the pine shift. So now, as opposed to a 50% reduction or so for SP2BO7, we're looking at several orders of magnitude reduction here for SP1HO1. Everything else is the same. It's just different E. coli isolates. So if we just look at this on a mass balance, so this is just the percent recovery of what came out of the column compared to what we added. Uh, we see it's not statistically significant, but we do see an increase, like we talked about. And again, as I met, was mentioning before, the pine chips resulted in about a 50% reduction, give or take, for SP2BO7, the strong, strong negatively charged isolate. Uh, for the SP1HO1, we actually see a statistical 
statistically significant increase in the amount of bacteria, going from less than 60% to 90%. So that's a, a significant increase in the amount of bacteria going through the soil. Uh, but then if we look at the pine chips, we notice several orders of magnitude drop, much greater retention following this application of pine chips. So while the trends between the two isolates are similar, the effect is much more pronounced with this SP1HO1. So clearly, we can add another factor in that it depends on the bacteria, depends on the bacterial properties on how uh, the biochar affects their transport behavior. So we talked about, so this was all done under saturated conditions. And we had mentioned, you know, we want to also look at unsaturated. So we're, the pores were fit, filled 50% with water. So we had 50% water, 50% air. And what we see is um, that the trends are generally the same as the saturated columns. But when you compare the saturated with the unsaturated, we see that the biochar addition is more pronounced, the effect of it. So high temperature poultry litter, you go from 80 to 60 percent here, but you go from 56 to 11 percent. On the pine chips, again, a 50 percent reduction here, and you see a five-fold to over ten-fold reduction for the um, unsaturated conditions. Okay, what? There we go. Okay. Uh, and then on this SP1HO1, we see, you know, a couple additional orders of magnitude drop. Now, this is incredible retention, going from 16% to five, basically to our detection limit, 5 times 10 to the minus 5th. So this was a significant increase in the amount of bacteria retained in the soil, or conversely, a significant decrease in the amount of bacteria passing through this column. So what are the mechanisms? Well, first it could be increased die off of bacteria. Except we, we think we ruled this out in that we, these experiments were only conducted for a couple hours and we did some survival studies and we didn't see any difference in how the bacteria grew up on our plates. So uh, over long term conditions, time frames, I suspect that biochar will impact their survivability just not in, in this set of experiments. Uh, we looked at changes in the chemical properties of soil, soil solution, and bacterial surface properties and really didn't find any strong correlations. Uh, clogging of pores by the biochar. So oftentimes, you know, bacteria are very small. So we're thinking of more of a physical chemical type of interaction with a soil surface. But if the pores are small enough, they'll just get physically filtered out. Uh, basically, but we did some column extractions and dissections, and we think that that's not the primary mechanism for what, why we see differences in the biochar and the control treatments. Uh, increased sorption. What we think is going on is increased sorption. Okay, sorption is just a catch-all phrase that means just any type of increase in the interaction between the bacteria and the, and the soil surface. So to look at that, we did what's called uh, batch sorption isotherms. So we took the solution of bacteria, mixed it with soil for the same amount of time that the soil, the solution would have been in the columns. We sampled what was left in solution. We could do a mass balance and calculate what was uh, attached, resorbed onto the soil, and get a sorption coefficient, a KD value. So what we did is we plotted that against the percent recovery, and this is the percent recovery on the y-axis. Again, I don't know why the axis title is not showing up here. And this is the KD value. So basically, as the KD value is increasing, we see that the of recovery from the columns is decreasing. So certainly the mechanisms between this batch isotherm and transport experiments are different. What it does show is that it's, there's a strong correlation, which would indicate that, in fact, what we're seeing in the transport side of things is related to just 
basically the biochar is affecting the absorption capacity or the absorption strength of the soil. So looking at that, now what about soil texture? So we conducted similar tests. This is a different E. coli isolate. This is actually 0157, the nasty one you hear about in the news, but this one had its uh, uh, toxigenic uh, genes removed. A salmonella and then microspheres. Okay, so microspheres are just polystyrene particles that are of similar size and charge as bacteria, but they don't, they're not alive. So you can kind of isolate abiotic and biotic effects. Because with the microspheres, you don't have to worry about death and growth or active attachment. So oftentimes we'll compare results with microspheres to try and tease out whether what we're seeing is due to just bacteria dying off or growing or actively attaching or if it's more of a, a physical mechanism. So similar to our other experiments, we see here's the control. We see a slight increase following the low temperature poultry litter addition, and we notice this reduction with the other biochars. Now if we re repeat the same experiment using a sandy loam, first of all the control we see over three order magnitude reduction in the bacteria coming through. When we mix that soil with a, the low temperature poultry litter, now we see over three order magnitude increase in the bacteria coming through. So what this tells us is that the potential exists that if you were to apply low temperature poultry litter to a sandy loam and you were to apply manure, and you might think, well, with the clay content as such, we wouldn't expect much bacteria to get down through our groundwater. Well, indeed, maybe we are increasing the risk of groundwater contamination here. Uh, similar to almost every study we've done, high temperature pine chips results in the greatest amount of retention in the soil, uh, decrease in the risk of the bacteria moving through the soil. Salmonella, similar to the E. coli in the fine sand, and again, in the sandy loam. So not only are we, do we see it with an E. coli, so let's see with salmonella. We see a great reduction just in the sandy loam itself because of the difference in soil texture. But when we mix it with a low temperature poultry litter, we see a significant orders of magnitude increase in bacteria coming through. We also see it, though, much more pronounced with the high temperature poultry litter as opposed to the E. coli. So again, different bacteria. General, the response is generally the same, but it's more amplified with the salmonella. Uh, with the microspheres, we had limited amount of biochar, so we didn't run each treatment. We wanted to kind of look at the two extremes, the low temperature poultry litter and the high temperature pine chips. Again, the microspheres we see in the fine sand, very consistent with what we've seen with the bacteria. And with the sandy loam, we don't see quite as much retention. We still see a couple orders of magnitude, but we do see a significant increase in the bacteria coming through following the low temperature poultry litter application. And again, that high temperature pine chips uh, is resulting in a noticeable decrease in the amount of bacteria passing through that column. And again, similar to before, we see this general uh, correlation between the percent recovery of the bacteria coming out of the column, and the, this is the KD value now on the y-axis. So as absorption in those, iso, in those batch experiments increases, it correlates with that treatment also and how the bacteria move through that column. So conclusions, um, you know, important factors controlling bacterial transport through biochar amended soils include biochar feedstock and pyrolysis temperature. You know, you can see the difference here between the poultry litter and pine chips. You can see just much more surface area available. You can see these little tubes that maybe stagnant zones or bacteria can get in and caught up into. So, you know, that's likely one reason why we see the big difference. Uh, surface properties of bacteria is an important factor, water content of soil and soil texture. And while the mechanisms are still not clear, it does appear that 
biochar affects absorption of bacteria at the soil surface and thus has the potential to affect its transport through the soil and possibly affect the risk to groundwater supplies. 